Good afternoon. I'm Melinda Hall, Dean of the Cathedral, and we're delighted that you have joined us for this election evensong. Our service tonight features music, readings, prayers, and a short sermon. Let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer for our nation. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Thank you. 
Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free? And to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. The word of the Lord. My soul does. 
doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For he Gospel according to Mark. Then they sent him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, 
Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. The word of the Lord. Loose the bonds of injustice. Let the oppressed go free. Share your bread. Clothe the naked. Take in the homeless. Stop speaking evil. God, through the prophet Isaiah, offers a kind of litany of how God expects people should live together. And while individuals are involved in all of it, God is speaking about the collective, about a society that has accepted as its norms oppression and wealth inequality and injustice. But God does not accept those norms. They violate the value God places on every human being. Throughout scripture, the Hebrew tradition asserts that God created all that is and invited creation and people into relationship with God. In the very first chapters of the very first book of scripture, this kind of relationship is pictured in a garden in which people and creation live in peace and harmony with one another, and God walks in the garden. It's a metaphor of how we're all meant to relate in an interconnected, life-giving, peaceful way. But there's another foundational truth that story contains, and it's that people choose against relationship, turn away from God and from one another to pursue their own ends, and the result is a breach that disrupts the relationship between people and people and creation and people and creation with God. Read one way, scripture is the story of God finding ways to overcome the breach, continuing to call people back into relationship, engendering within people a way and desire to live in accord with God's values, with the original peace and harmony God intended. God does this in calling the ancient Hebrew people, first out of slavery and then into a promised land, to be a people set apart in a particular relationship with God that leads them to bless the nations. This living set apart means living as God imagined humanity to be, in right relationship with one another and in right relationship with God. And it's to this people that our prophet's words speak today. As time had passed, Wealth inequality and oppression of workers and selfishness and conflict had begun to creep into their society and create disruption. God identifies the beginning of the social decay with people's failure to connect what happened in worship with what happens in their daily lives. Everyone continues to worship God, to pray and to fast, but it seems to have no effect on how they live. Worshiping God, contemplating the one who is love, who is peace, who is just, should have a profound effect on the worshiper. Opening oneself to the divine has a transforming effect on the heart and on the mind, and therefore on one's actions. But God points in no uncertain terms to the gap, that if worship is not having a transformative effect on people's hearts and minds, if it is not taken out into the street and makes no difference in society, then worship has little meaning. God does not desire worship for God's sake, but for the sake of the worshiper and for the sake of the world. Until worship leads to justice, it has little meaning. But when worship does lead to changed action in the streets, The result is nothing less than the restoration of God's intended world, in which there is enough for everybody, in which people are healthy and whole, and there is plenty. The prophet speaks metaphor after metaphor about what that will be like, like a well-watered garden, like ancient ruins restored, like repairer of streets and broken places mended. All of that is possible because individuals work collectively to live in a society that honors the dignity of every person and seeks to create just and equal norms for all. And it's the vision of the prophet 
that this happens because people are connected to one another and rooted in the divine love. God's vision for how people might live together hasn't changed. The Christian tradition confesses that God became a person in Jesus Christ to show us love with a human face. In Jesus' every action, he embodies the words of the prophet. He engages with people of all genders and ages and walks of life equally. He lifts burdens off people. He heals suffering. He encourages the sharing of goods. For those who claim to worship him, one has to ask if the worship we engage in transforms us, leading us to live differently in the world. Jesus says he came to bring a kingdom, God's kingdom. His is not a project of individualistic salvation. His is a project that is about transforming all of human relationships to mirror the kingdom of God in which peace and harmony and justice are the norms. And as the prophet said, if worship isn't leading us to live into those norms, to work to bring them about in the world, then it has little meaning. We're invited to God's project in the world, but not some sort of soppy love, but a love that is just, that is right, that calls to account any policy and any politic that seeks to divide people or foster inequality or encourage selfishness or place burdens on people or create any form of impression. The words of the prophet echo down to us, calling us to share our bread, to undo every yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to stop speaking evil. That is worship. That is what God desires. And while it looks differently than it did centuries ago, it is still ours to do this work. It in democracy, it is ours to advocate for our brothers and sisters who carry heavy burdens, who do not have enough bread, who do not have a shelter in which to sleep at night, who are oppressed and who are made unequal. We are to use our freedom to grant freedoms to others, to take our rights and extend them so that others have increased rights, to take whatever is our wealth and our privilege and distribute it broadly, to cast our vote not only in our own interest, but in the interest of others, in the interest of a more just society. It goes beyond any partisan divide and it calls our allegiance higher. The words of the prophet Isaiah echo through the ages, calling us back to the values of God. They remind us that God cares deeply about the collective, about how we live together. By opening ourselves to God's transforming love, we can transform the world around us. That's the point of worship. May God empower us with the courage, hope, and compassion to loose the bonds of injustice to break every yoke, and to let the oppressed go free. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For my lies are sin, sin. thus I salvation, which thou hast prepared before
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, 
guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected, and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you declare your glory and show forth your handiwork in the heavens and in the earth. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work you give us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good. For the sake of him who came among us as one who serves, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.